All right, this is a pretest for 4NF. So the way I want you to do is start the video, and then you're going to go to problem one. And then you're going to stop the video on the first problem and solve the problem on a separate sheet of paper. Once you're finished, I want you to turn the video on and um, see if you were correct. Then I just want you to repeat this process until you finished all the problems. Here's the first problem. All right, this is the first problem on our pretest. Now, remember what I want you to do is we're gonna, I want you to try to solve this problem on your own. So what fraction below is equivalent to two thirds? So you should stop the video right now, solve it on a separate, solve this problem on a separate piece of paper and then come back, okay? So I'll give you a few seconds. All right. So I'm going to show you how to solve this problem after you've done it. It says what fraction below is equivalent to two thirds. The first thing you have to realize is the word equivalent. That's one of the words we need to know. It's our math vocabulary. We have a song for that. Equivalent fractions is the name for fractions whose value are the same. So we're just trying to find the fractions whose value is the same as two thirds. Okay. So let me, for example, give you the fraction two fourths with using fraction tiles. So I have two fourths. Now, if I was going to find the fraction equivalent to two fourths, I would want to find the same amount cut into more or less pieces. So it's easy for me to do less pieces. So if I look here, well, two fourths is the same as one half. We can see this with our like fraction sandwich here. We've just sandwiched two together. And we notice they're the exact same amount. One has just been cut into more pieces. So that's the theory behind equivalent fractions. So now let's try to do this. When you see the word equivalent, you also see that it says equal in it. There's a hidden equal in there. So what I'm gonna do is just change all these to have an equal sign here, because we're trying to find the equivalent one. And then I'm gonna put two thirds here. And then I'm gonna try to prove which of these equations is correct. All right. Now, we know um, most of fourth grade is about uh, the first part of our fraction song, which goes adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly. Now, these aren't matched. And when we compare fractions or when we try to see if they're equivalent, we want to make the bottom numbers the same. Okay, and that's how we prove that they are equivalent. So for example, um, let's do this problem here. Now, what we wanna do is, we see this is a four and this is a three, so we want less pieces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, we wanna find the common denominator, and to do that, we're gonna use our multiple song or our skip counting song to find the least common multiple. So um, here, since these are getting smaller, I'm gonna divide here, because I know four is bigger than three. To, so to get three, I'd have to divide. So I, whatever I did to the bottom, I'd do to the top. So now I'm gonna use my skip counting songs, but I'm gonna go backwards, because I know division is the opposite of multiplication. So I ask, how many threes are in four? Three, six. Notice how I didn't hear a four. So I can't make these equivalent. I can't make them have the same denominator. So that can't be correct. So now I'm gonna to go to this one right here. Is one half equal to two thirds? Now let's try to see that. So here we notice the two is smaller than three. So in order to get a three, we would have to multiply. Now we're gonna use our skip counting songs to find if they have, we can make them have the same down number. So we say two, four, but we see we didn't get to a three. We skipped that, so we these can't be equivalent. So now we're gonna try 16. Now 16 is bigger than three, so we're gonna divide, and then we're gonna go backwards and ask how many threes are in 16. So here we go. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. We skipped um, 16, so we can't go into 16 equally if we divide it by three, so this one doesn't work. So now let's try this one here. 
Now hopefully this one will work because all these didn't. But this is a six, this is a three, so it's getting smaller. So we know we have to divide. Now we're gonna ask ourselves, how many threes are in six? Three, six, oh my gosh, it went into it. It went into it two times. So if this is correct, if I divide six by two, I should get three. So six divided by two is three, and four divided by two is two. Now, this is the correct answer. Now, if you did have manipulatives, just to prove that, all I'm gonna show you is four, six, and you're gonna see the math actually works. Four, six is equivalent to two thirds. Do you see that? Because they match up. Do you see that? So that's why this one works, okay? All right, next problem. Okay, I'll read the problem and then you should turn the video off. And then when you're done and you've written it on a separate piece of paper, your answer, then come back and see how I solved it. It says compare the fractions and choose the letter that represents the correct symbol. Okay, so five tenths and three fifths. So you're comparing those, okay? All right, so stop the video and then come back when you've answered um, this problem on a separate sheet of paper. All right, so the key words to this are compare. We know when we see the word compare, that means alligator in math. Compare always means alligator. So we have our alligator sim symbols greater than, less than, or equal to. So it says compare the fractions and choose the letter that represents the correct symbol, right? So we know that fourth grade is all about matching the denominator. So adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly. These denominators are not uh, matched and that makes it a lot more difficult to compare them. So what we need to do is match the denominators. Now, the way that we do that is we use our multiple sum. So we're gonna find the least common multiple uh, some people call it the least common denominator. The way we do that is we write the five and we write the 10. Okay, I always start with the lowest number and I skip count. So five, 10, 15, 20. And then I would do that for 10 too. 10, but wait a minute. I don't have to continue because I already have the smallest multiple that they have in common which is 10. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure the denominators are the same. So all I do is I write 5 tenths, but look, 5 tenths already has a 10, so I don't have to do anything to this. I could just leave it like that. But if that freaks you out, we could prove that they're the same, just saying, okay, 10 times what equals 10? One. Five times what equals five? One. So, because the numerator and the denominator are the same, we know this equals to one whole. So we know these are equivalent fractions. We also know they're equivalent because they look exactly the same. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. But five tenths, three fifths, sorry, three fifths does not have a 10 at the bottom. So the denominator needs to be changed to 10. And I know this is gonna work because they have common multiples. So I'm gonna do my song, five, 10, it looks like I need to multiply the top and the bottom by two. So three times two is six, five times two is 10. And now I know I can write this equivalent. We know these are equivalent because whenever the numerator and the denominator are the same, we get a fraction that's equal to one whole. So instead of writing this as three fifths, I'm gonna write the equivalent fraction six tenths because it's way easier to compare. So once the down numbers are the same, the down denominator is the same, all I have to do is look at the tops. So I ask myself, five is greater than less than or equal to six. Well, I know that six is the greater number. So the alligator, I make sure it points to that. So I have five, tenths is less than six tenths or five tenths is less than three fifths and I look down here I find that symbol looks like the green one is it 
Now, if you wanted to prove this with manipulatives, all you do is you get 5 tenths. So I get 5 tenths, which would be here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths. Okay, and I would compare it to 3 fifths. And I'd put it here. Whoops, it's flipped. And I would notice that um, 3 fifths is way bigger. Well, it's not way bigger, but 3 fifths is bigger than 5 tenths. So the math actually worked. Okay, good. Next problem. Which letter represents the correct sum of 4 eighths and 2 eighths? Remember to turn the video off and try this problem on a separate piece of paper. All right, so the scary thing here is the word sum, and sum just means the answer to addition. So all I'm going to do is take this here and write it down here. I'm going to write 4 eighths. And see the and here? The and is going to become a plus sign. So I'm going to put plus 2 eighths. And this is two fractions, so adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly. These bottoms are matched. So now all I do is add the tops, 4, 5, 6. So I have my answer. The answer is B. Next problem, which answer below shows 4 eighths decomposed into the correct unit fractions? Is it A, B, C, or D? Remember to stop the video at this time and write it on a separate piece of paper. All right, here we go. Decomposed, when you have, um, when you decompose something, remember it means to break apart. So if I had two fourths here to break it apart, I would just break it. Now, the other word you need to know here is also unit fractions. If you have a unit fraction, the numerator is always one, okay? The denominator can be anything, but the numerator is always one. Why? Because it's just so showing size, like we have one-fourth, we have one-third. There's always a one at the top of all these tiles I have in my little kit because they're all unit fractions. All right, so I just have to write four eighths, and I just have to decompose it to break, so break it apart. So if I do that, the numerator has to be 1. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4 fractions, and adding and subtracting, which I'm adding, because if I add them all together, I should get this back. Adding and subtracting is plain to see. Oh, you match the bottoms perfectly. So I'm just matching the bottoms perfectly. Now I've got unit fractions because the, the numerator is 1. This looks like it's it. So I look at my answer here, it looks like A. Next problem. Which expression is equal to two and three sixths? So I need you to stop the video now. All right, so the hard word here is expression. These are all expressions because they don't have an equal sign. So. That's what expression means. So they're just saying which one of these equals 2 and 3, 6. So we're going to see which one of these is true. Now when I solve, um, this is called a mixed number right here and here. It's when you have a whole number, like you're counting whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, matched with a fraction. It's called a mixed number because you have two things, a whole number and a fraction, so it's mixed. So to solve these, all I'm going to do, uh, when I do these, I just write them up and down, so vertically, because it's just easier for me. I don't make as many mistakes. 
And when I do this, all I do is I add the fractions first. So adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly. So the bottoms matched. And now I add the tops. One, two, three. So this one, and then I go to the whole number and I just add these up. One, two. So this is two and three thirds. So that one does not equal two and three sixths. So now I go to the next problem and I write it vertically. Two, one and two six plus one and one six. And remember I first do the fraction part of this first. So adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly and then you just add the tops. Two, three. And now I'm going to add the whole number, one, two. This looks like two and three sixths. So I think the answer is this. Whenever I do a problem or a test, I just double check all the rest of them. Adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly. Since this is not a mixed number, I can just solve it horizontally. So adding and, subtract, oops, adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly and you add the tops. And that is not equal to two and three six. And I'm gonna try this one. This is a mixed number, so I wanna write it vertically. So this is my last problem. One and two thirds plus one and two thirds. Adding and subtract, so I do the fraction side first. Adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly. Then I add the top, two, three, four. And then I add the whole numbers, one, two. That does not look like two and three, six, so that's not it. So I'm positive I got that right. Next problem. Which answer represents this written as a fraction? I don't wanna read it, because when you read it, you say the answer down here. So that's a hint to you. All right, remember to stop the video and then write it, the problem on a separate piece of paper and come back. All right, so remember when we are doing decimals, what we always wanna do is do our place value chart. So we need to know this is one whole and we know that's one out of one. Then we do the next place and we just add a zero to the denominator. And then this one's next door, so all I do is put a one, and then I add another zero to 10. Now I've got the places. Now all you do is you read what, pretend this isn't here, you just read what's on top, which is three, and then I look down here and it looks like hundreds. So all I'm gonna do up here is look for the one that says three hundreds. So three tenths, no. 30 hundredths, no. Three hundredths, yes. Three thousandths, no. And that's how you solve that one. Next problem, which answer is the correct product? So watch out, you just have to know this. If you don't, try to solve that. Hopefully you'll figure out what that means. Okay, remember stop the video. All right, you're probably back by now. So the first thing we have to do is know what the word product means. Product just means the answer to multiplication. And I'm just going to write this problem and use my song again, because that song, whenever I see a fraction, I know I'm going to be doing my fraction song. But watch out, is this a fraction here? Remember, all the numbers have to be fractions when we're using our song. So we know to write five holes as a fraction, we just put it over one, because we have five holes, five pizzas that haven't been cut, five holes, okay? So here's the song, adding and subtracting is plain to see. You match the bottoms perfectly. Multiplying fractions is no big problem. It's the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So I'm just gonna do that. So the top times the top is 10, because I go five, 10. And then the bottom times the bottom is three. 
And that's my answer. And I just look up here, hey, it looks like it's A. And that's the answer to that one. Next problem, which symbol correctly compares these two decimals? All right, remember to turn the video off while you solve the problem. All right, so um, the words you need to know is compare. Whenever you see the word compare, it means alligator, so don't forget that. And we're just gonna compare these two numbers. Well, what I like to do, I always do my place value chart. I do one whole because it's on the opposite side of the decimal point, so that's my whole. Then I just keep adding zeros to the bottom. And I put the lines here because it looks nice. And I do it here too. So I know this is one whole, one tenth, one hundredth. And then I just compare. So I'm gonna compare the biggest value digit. So here's zero. This looks like the same, same. So we cross that out because they're both equal here. And they go to the next digit, one and three. Wait, that's a one and that's a three. Which one's bigger, one or three? Three is bigger, so we know that the alligator eats the bigger number. And the way you can visually think about this is remember tenths is dimes. If you have one dime and eight pennies, and this guy has three dimes and six pennies, well, three dimes is a lot bigger than one dime. So that's why you can look at it this way. So I look for the sign down here. Ah, that looks like it is. A, that's the answer. Next video, last problem, I mean. This is the last problem. What is five tenths expressed in hundredths? All right, so just turn the video off while you do this on a separate piece of paper. All right, this is the last problem. So I have a 10 here and they want me to find the equivalent fraction but that has a hundred here. And what that means, they said, look, you have a pizza and you cut it into 10 slices, but they want it cut into 100 slices, all right? So now I'm just gonna find the missing numerator here. So it says, um, you have 10 and it looks like it's getting bigger. So this looks like multiplication. What do I need to, let me use a different pen. What do I need to multiply 10 by to get 100? Let's check, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, that's 10. So remember, whatever I do the bottom, I do to the top. So 10 times 10 is 100, and five times 10 is 50. I know this is correct because whenever I multiply any number by one, I get the same answer. So this is the same amount, it's just cut into more pieces. So now I'm gonna look to see if I can find that one. Oh wow, A keeps getting the answer. All right, I hope that video helped you study for 4 and F. Good luck.